Once upon a time, in a town called Spooksville, there was a cute little ghost named Boo. Boo loved Halloween just as much as any other child, and like them, he also loved candies. But there was one thing that was special about Boo. He was a real ghost. On one particular Halloween night, Boo decided to go trick-or-treating for the first time. He draped himself in a little sheet with cut-out eyes, thinking that it would help him blend in with the other children. As he floated from door to door, he would ring doorbells and with his soft, ghostly voice, He'd whisper, Trick or treat! Every time a door opened, people would exclaim, Oh, what a realistic ghost costume! Here, take some extra candy for the effort. And just like that, with each house he visited, Boo's candy bag grew heavier and heavier. As the night went on, he encountered other children, all dressed up in their fun costumes. I'm a witch, said one. I'm a werewolf, said another. When they asked Boo, he'd giggle and say, I'm a ghost. Everyone thought he was just playing along. By the end of the night, Boo had the most candy out of everyone. He was delighted. Not because of all the sweets, but because for the first time, he felt just like the other kids. Returning to his cosy little haunted house, he poured out all the candies and decided to share them with the other friendly spirits who lived there. They had a big feast, and all the ghosts celebrated Boo's successful trick-or-treating adventure. And so, dear listener, this tale reminds us that sometimes what makes us different is also what makes us special. Embrace who you are, and the world We'll embrace you right back. Good night, little dreamer. May your dreams be as sweet as booze candy and as magical as a Halloween night. Once upon a time, in the small town of Pumpkinville, every year the people of Pumpkinville held a big contest to see who could carve the most beautiful, the scariest, or the funniest jack-o'-lantern. Families gathered, friends teamed up, and everyone would spend the entire day carving their pumpkins. This year, a little boy named Timmy wanted to join in on the fun. Timmy wasn't very good at carving, but he loved pumpkins and Halloween so much that he wanted to try. He picked out a pumpkin that was neither too big nor too small, just the right size for him. With his tiny carving knife and a very big spoon, Timmy started working on his pumpkin. He didn't aim for anything scary or intricate. All he wanted was to carve a jack-o'-lantern 
that would make people smile. So, he carved two big eyes, a small nose, and a big, goofy grin. It was lopsided, and a little uneven, but to Timmy, it was perfect. The time for the contest came, and all the pumpkins were placed on wooden tables for everyone to see. There were scary pumpkins with menacing glares, artistic pumpkins with detailed designs, and funny pumpkins that made people chuckle. Then there was Timmy's pumpkin, sitting there with its goofy, lopsided smile. At first, people passed it by, paying more attention to the other, elaborate pumpkins. But then, something magical happened. A little girl stopped and stared at Timmy's pumpkin. She giggled, and her laughter caught on like a happy tune. Soon enough, more children gathered around Timmy's goofy jack-o'-lantern, their faces lighting up with joy. Parents noticed too, and couldn't help but smile. By the end of the night, it was clear that while Timmy's pumpkin didn't win for being the scariest or the most beautiful, it had won something far greater. It was the most loved jack-o'-lantern of them all. And so, dear listener, this story tells us that it's not always about being the biggest, the best, or the most impressive. Sometimes, it's the simple, heartfelt things that truly make a difference. Good night, little dreamer. May your dreams be filled with big goofy grins and little moments that warm your heart. Once upon a time, in the bustling town of Clover, there was a black cat named Rusty. His soft, velvety fur glistened like the midnight sky, and his eyes were as sharp as a new crescent moon. Yet despite his elegant appearance, the townsfolk of Clover avoided him whispering about bad luck whenever he strolled by. Feeling rejected and desolate, Dusty decided to leave Clover in search of a place where he could belong. He journeyed through thick woods, across bubbling streams and over vast hills until he stumbled upon a serene village named Sunnyside. Sunnyside was different. Children played in the streets, people hummed happy tunes, and there was no sign of superstitions. To Dusty's surprise, as he entered the village, a group of kids ran up to him excitedly patting him and playing with him. They hadn't flinched at his black fur or muttered anything about bad luck. Within days, Dusty was a beloved figure in Sunnyside. He was welcomed into homes, given treats at local stores, and children often drew pictures of him in their school books. He found a sunny spot 
on Mrs. Rose's porch, where he basked every afternoon. And Mr. Baker always had a small saucer of milk ready for him each morning. One day, while enjoying his new life, Dusty found a shiny golden coin on the ground. He nudged it with his paw to the center of the village square. By evening, a villager recognized it as a long lost family heirloom and rewarded Dusty with a lavish feast. As the days turned into weeks and weeks into months, Dusty realized he wasn't just a lucky cat. He was the luckiest cat of all. Not because of golden coins or grand feasts, but because he had found a place where he was loved unconditionally. And so, dear listener, Dusty's tale tells us that true luck isn't about avoiding bad omens or seeking out good fortune. It's about finding a place where you are loved and accepted for who you truly are. Good night, little dreamer. May you always find your sunny side. Let the moonlight guide you to the sweetest dreams where every day is a lucky day. Sleep tight. Once upon a time, in the peaceful town of Moonsville, Tom was a curious boy with an insatiable appetite for adventure. When he heard he was getting a new neighbour, he was bubbling with excitement. The day finally came, and a boy named Ben moved in to the house next door. Tom, always eager to make new friends, quickly introduced himself. The two boys clicked instantly. They played together, explored the neighborhood, and even had the same taste in books and games. One day, as they sat on the grass, Tom invited Ben for a sleepover at his house. But to Tom's surprise, Ben looked down and whispered a soft no. But Tom was persistent. We could have midnight treats, he tempted. Ben's eyes twinkled, but he declined. We can play board games until dawn, Tom continued. Again, Ben looked tempted, but sadly shook his head. We can build tents and pretend we're in a vast jungle, Tom said enthusiastically. But each time, Ben's answer was a gentle no. It wasn't until Tom, in a last-ditch effort, said, How about we stay up late, watch the full moon, and share scary stories? Ben's ears perked up. You like scary stories? He asked with wide eyes. Tom laughed. Oh, I love them! And you know what? I've always wished to meet a real-life monster! 
This seemed to pique Ben's interest. With a hesitating voice, Ben finally agreed. Okay, how about a sleepover at my house instead? Tom was thrilled. That night, in the cosy attic of Ben's home, under the watchful gaze of the bright full moon, Ben whispered a secret to Tom. I... I'm a werewolf. Tom looked at Ben, waiting for him to burst into laughter, thinking it was part of the scary stories they had planned to share. But Ben's face remained serious. Slowly, in the moonlight, Ben transformed into a small, fluffy, werewolf pup. More adorable than frightening. Tom was taken aback, but then he chuckled. You might be a real-life monster, but you're the cutest one I've ever seen. <laughs> the two friends spent the night sharing tales, with Ben providing the most authentic werewolf stories. By morning, their bond had grown even stronger. And so, dear listener, this tale reminds us that true friendships are built on trust, understanding, and accepting each other for who we are, no matter how different or monstrous we might seem. Good night, little dreamer. May you always find a friend who accepts you, fairy paws and all. Let the stories of adventure and acceptance guide you into a world of dreams where everything is possible. Sleep tight. Once upon a time, in the cosy town of Haslington, Gus the guinea pig had a secret hobby. Tucked away in his tiny home, he had a vast collection of comic books. Day after day, Gus would lose himself in the colourful pages, following the adventures of superheroes and dreaming of having his own superpowers. One of his favourite superheroes was the Incredible Hulk. Gus admired how the Hulk transformed when he got angry, using his enormous strength to protect others. Little did Gus know his passion for this particular comic would soon have unforeseen consequences. One day, after reading a particularly intense Hulk comic, Gus got into a squabble with a fellow guinea pig over a carrot. Suddenly, his frustration grew. Gus felt a strange sensation. His fur began to tingle, his heart raced, and before he knew it, his white and brown patches turned a brilliant shade of green. The other guinea pigs stared in astonishment. <gasps> That's incredible, Gus! One of them exclaimed. 
instead of feeling powerful like his hero. Goose felt a bit embarrassed. He scurried off to his little home to hide and hoped that the colour would fade away. However, every time Gus felt a strong emotion, especially anger, he would turn green. At first, he tried to hide it, but over time, the other guinea pigs grew fond of incredible Gus. They realised that Gus's green transformation was harmless and it became a unique and endearing trait that only he possessed. Gus learned to see his green transformation as a reminder to pause and take deep breaths when he felt overwhelmed. And soon, he didn't turn green as often, but whenever he did, he was reminded of his love for comic books and the lessons they taught him about self-control and acceptance. And so, dear listener, this tale of Gus shows us that sometimes our quirks, even if they seem odd or embarrassing, can become our most cherished traits. It's these unique qualities that make us who we are. Good night, little dreamer. Embrace everything that makes you special. Let your dreams be as colourful and vivid as Gus's adventures. And remember that you're perfect just the way you are. Once upon a time, in the quiet town of Spooksville, in the highest tower of the oldest, creepiest mansion, lived a bat named Benny. Benny was unlike any other bat in Spooksville. You see, Benny had a fascination with hats. It began one chilly autumn evening when Benny found a tiny, discarded witch's hat. To Benny, it wasn't just any hat. It was the perfect accessory for Halloween. With great excitement, he perched it atop his head. It was a tad big often falling over one eye, but Benny thought it had added to his charm. Every night, leading up to Halloween, Benny would fly around Spooksville, showing off his new hat. The owls hooted with delight, the spiders wove special webs in appreciation, and even the usually scary ghosts couldn't resist a chuckle. When they saw Benny coming, his hat comically tipping side to side as he flew. One Halloween night, the town held its annual Spooksville Parade. All the creatures, big and small, dressed in their scariest outfits, ready to impress. But this year, everyone was buzzing about one thing. Did you see Benny's hat? As the parade began, Benny took to the sky, soaring high and performing loops, his hat magically staying put. The moonlight made his hat's buckle glisten 
and every creature in Spooksville cheered for Benny and his delightful accessory. After that night, hats became quite popular among the bats of Spooksville, but none were as iconic or loved as Benny's witch's hat. And so, every Halloween, in honour of Benny's trend-setting ways, bats all over Spooksville donned hats of all shapes and sizes. So, dear listener, Benny's tale reminds us that sometimes it's the smallest quirks and unexpected choices that make the most memorable of impressions. It's okay to be different and embrace what makes you happy. Good night, little dreamer. May your dreams be filled with soaring flights and magical hats in a world where being unique is celebrated. Rest well and dream big. Once upon a time, in the vibrant city of Monstropolis lived a blue fluffy monster named Max. Max was round with big googly eyes and soft huggable fur. While Max was adored by everyone for his friendly nature and infectious laughter, there was something that bothered him. He wished he was cool. Inspired by movie stars and rock stars, Max decided that the quickest way to elevate his cool factor would be to wear sunglasses. But not just during the day, oh no, Max thought he'd stand out if he wore them at night. The first evening he tried it, Max strutted through Monstropolis with his shiny new sunglasses, hoping to impress. However, instead of the admiration he anticipated, he was met with a series of bumps, crashes and oopsies. Without his night vision, he bumped into lampposts, crashed into food stalls and even accidentally danced with a statue thinking it was a fellow monster. <coughs> Word quickly spread, and soon the streets were filled with monsters trying to catch a glimpse of Max's nighttime antics. They weren't laughing at him, but with him, delighting in the playful chaos he caused. Realising the silliness of his situation, Max decided to join in on the fun. He played a game where he'd guessed what he'd bumped into. Was it a mailbox? A bicycle? Or perhaps Mrs. Puff, the roundest monster in Monstropolis? By the end of the night, Max had learned a valuable lesson. While the sunglasses didn't make him cooler in the way he had hoped, his ability to laugh at himself and turn an embarrassing situation into a fun game made him the coolest monster in town. And so, dear listener, Max's story teaches us that it's not the accessories or the clothes that make us cool, but our attitude and the way we handle situations. True coolness comes from being genuine, kind and able to find joy in the little things. Good night little dreamer. 
Dream of a world where every stumble is a step to a new dance move and where being yourself is the coolest thing of all. Close your eyes and let the stars guide you to a night of sweet dreams. Once upon a time, in a quaint town of Whimsyville, little Emma loved visiting her grandma Edna. Her house, an old cottage with a red brick chimney and flower-laden windowsills, was her favourite place in the world. But the most enchanting part of the house was the kitchen. Every time Emma visited, there were peculiar things happening in that kitchen. Jars floated off the shelves, spoons stirred pots on their own, and sometimes a soft, melodious hum filled the air. And right in the midst of it all was Grandma Edna. Her silver hair pulled back, eyes sparkling with mischief. One day, as Emma peeped through a crack in the door, she saw something she'd never forget. With a wave of Grandma Edna's hand, a burst of shimmering stardust transformed a plain doe into a fluttering golden butterfly which danced around the room before settling gently on Emma's shoulder. Emma gasped. <gasps> I think my grandma's a witch, she whispered to herself. One evening, curiosity bubbling over, Emma mustered the courage to ask. Grandma, are you a witch? Edna chuckled softly, looking down at her granddaughter with twinkling eyes. Well, my dear, not just any witch. In this kitchen, with a dash of magic and a sprinkle of love, I can create anything. Emma's eyes grew wide with amazement. Can you teach me? Over the next few days, the kitchen was alive with magic. Under Grandma's guidance, Emma learned to make flowers bloom instantly, turn fruits into colourful birds, and even craft a tiny rain cloud that rained sprinkles. The two shared secret recipes whispered spells and giggled at magical mishaps. The bond between them grew stronger and the magic they created was a reflection of their love for each other. And so, dear listener, this tale reminds us that the real magic in our lives comes from the love and memories we share with our family. Good night, little dreamer. May your dreams be filled with magical kitchens, fluttering butterflies, and the warm embrace of those you love. Let the whispers of ancient spells lull you into a deep, peaceful sleep. Once upon a time, in the 
peaceful town of Autumn Hollow. Young Kelly always had a nose for mystery. And as October approached, a peculiar thing began to happen. Overnight, beautifully carved jack-o'-lanterns began appearing all over the village. On windowsills, at doorsteps, in parks, and even on the town's main bridge. These pumpkins, with their fiery glows, were a sight to behold. The villagers were both surprised and delighted, but no one knew where these jack-o'-lanterns came from. Whispers of a secret pumpkin artist filled the air. Determined to uncover the mystery, Kelly hatched a plan. One evening, she hid behind a large oak tree in the park, waiting and watching. Hours passed, and just as Kelly was about to give up, a shimmering golden mist began to envelop the central square. Out of the mist emerged a tall, regal figure with a crown made of twisted vines and pumpkin flowers. It was the Pumpkin King. Kelly watched in awe as the Pumpkin King, with a wave of his hand and a soft chant, turned ordinary pumpkins into magnificent jack-o'-lanterns. Each pumpkin transformed, reflecting the dreams and joys of the residents of Autumn Hollow. Overcome by curiosity and gratitude, Kelly approached the Pumpkin King. Thank you, she whispered, her eyes wide with wonder. The Pumpkin King smiled calmly. I bring the spirit of Halloween, a time for joy, imagination and community. It's my gift to towns that cherish this magical season. Feeling inspired, Kelly had an idea. We should have a way to thank you, just like we do for Father Christmas. And so, Kelly spread the word throughout Autumn Hollow. Every Halloween, alongside their own jack-o'-lanterns, the villagers began leaving out a special candy, toffee-covered apples, the Pumpkin King's favourite. Year after year, the tradition grew, and the bond between Autumn Hollow and the Pumpkin King deepened. And so, dear listener, Kelly's tale teaches us that magic can be found in the most unexpected places, and it's the gestures of gratitude and community that make any tradition truly special. Good night, little dreamer. May your dreams be painted with golden mists and enchanted pumpkins, where magic dances in every corner and gratitude warms every heart. Once upon a time, in the town of Echo Park, every Halloween, Amidst the sounds of excited children and the rustling of candy wrappers, young Christopher could hear something else. A soft, rhythmic clattering 
almost like bones shaking. Each year, the mysterious sound seemed to beckon him, but his friends never heard it. They'd laugh and say, Chris, you're just imagining things. It's Halloween. Don't let your imagination run too wild. However, this year, Christopher was determined to find the source of the sound. Inspired by the noise, he dressed up as a skeleton for Halloween, donning a black suit painted with luminescent bones that glowed in the dark. After trick-or-treating with his friends, he discreetly made his way back to school, following the sound. As he sneaked into the school's main hall, he couldn't believe his eyes. The room, usually so familiar, was transformed. It was filled with dancing skeletons of all shapes and sizes, moving and grooving to the beat of a skeletal band. Their bones created the very sound Christopher had been hearing. Surprisingly, the skeletons weren't menacing. They looked jubilant. Seeing Christopher's amazement, one of them approached him and extended a bony hand. Join us! Christopher hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath and stepped into the dance, moving to the rhythm of the shaking bones. As he danced, he realised that Halloween wasn't just about candies and costumes for kids, but a night with a supernatural got to celebrate too. After what felt like hours of dancing, the clock struck midnight and the skeletons began to fade away, leaving the hall as it was. They waved goodbye leaving Christopher in the middle of the empty room, memories of the night swirling in his head. The next day, when Christopher recounted his adventure, most didn't believe him, attributing it to a vivid dream. But Chris knew the truth and would always cherish that Halloween night when he danced with the skeletons. And so, dear listener, Halloween is a reminder that the world is filled with mysteries and wonders, often just beyond our sight. It's a night where boundaries blur, and for a brief moment, we can connect with the magical. Good night, little dreamer. May your dreams be filled with whimsical dances and joyous celebrations, where the line between the ordinary and the extraordinary blurs into a beautiful tapestry. Rest well and dream sweetly. Once upon a time, in the small town of Booth, a little boy named George was known throughout the town for his absolute love for sweet candy. Every year on Halloween, while other kids were already out collecting candies, George's parents had a family tradition. They would first visit Grandpa Joe's house before embarking on their trick-or-treating adventures. To George, 
This felt like a lifetime of delay. A torturous wait, while potential candies slipped through his fingers. He imagined the other kids filling their buckets while he had to sit and chat. This particular Halloween, Grandpa Joe was especially excited. He'd spent the entire day baking a batch of special Halloween cookies just for George. They were shaped like spooky spiders, mischievous monsters, and ghastly ghouls. Each one meticulously decorated with care and love. However, when George saw them, his patience had finally ran out. In a moment of frustration, he knocked the plate of cookies on the floor, the delicate treats shattering into crumbs. I don't want cookies! I want sweets! He exclaimed, voice dripping with petulance. Grandpa Joe's face fell, but he took a deep breath, his old eyes showing sadness but understanding. George, he said calmly, you'll be helping me remake these cookies. For the next hour, George witnessed firsthand the labour and love that went into making cookies from mixing the dough to shaping and decorating. He realised that each cookie was a piece of art and more importantly, a piece of Grandpa Joe's heart. By the end, George was exhausted, but he had also developed a newfound appreciation for the hard work he looked at the new batch of cookies with pride and a twinge of regret for his earlier outburst. The next morning, after a night of successful trick-or-treating, George had a mountain of sweets. However, instead of hoarding them all to himself, he packed a generous portion and took them to Grandpa Joe's house. I'm sorry, Grandpa, George said, offering his sweets. Thank you for teaching me the value of hard work and the love that goes into making something special. Grandpa Joe smiled, ruffling George's hair. It's never too late to learn, my boy. And sharing makes any treat even sweeter. And so, dear listener, it's important to remember that the best gifts are those made with love and care. It's not about how much we have, but the love and thought behind what we give and receive. Good night, little dreamer. May you always find joy in the little acts of kindness and cherish the love and effort people put into making you happy. Close your eyes and let sweet dreams fill your night. Once upon a time, on a Halloween night, ghosts and ghouls roamed, but none gave a fright. For in this tale, as you'll come to see, Halloween's essence is in laughter and glee. The moon shone bright, casting shadows so thin. Children dressed up 
eager to begin. Witches not wicked, on broomsticks they flew, with hats that giggled and cauldrons that cooed. Frankenstein's monster, in stitches and green, danced with the fairies, a sight to be seen. Black cats with purrs, soft as a song, join jolly jokers in a merry dance throng. Skeletons danced with a jolly old clack, mummies just wanted to snack and kick back. Vampires sip juice with a cherry on top, while friendly werewolves jumped, skipped and hopped. Dragons breathed fire, not to scare but to light, the way for the kids in the soft moonlit night. Zombies not groaning sang songs of delight as little ghosts laughed draped in sheets snowy white. Haunted houses with doors open wide invited all in with no need to hide. For on this night with spirits so spry the true spell of Halloween was to fly ever so high. Pixies and pirates in playful delight chased after goblins under the moonlight. Mermaids and knights hand in hand did parade joining the revels of the grand masquerade. So if you think Halloween's a night just for scares Open your heart and see how everyone shares laughter, fun treats, and stories so fine, where love and joy are the true storyline. And now, as the stars twinkle, it's time to take flight, joining the dreams of the enchanting night. Good night, little dreamer. Snuggle up tight. Let Halloween's magic fill your dreams tonight.